All right, this is uh, the uh, House of Representatives uh, giving a uh, press conference. Um, and in my opinion, they're taking a victory lap here. Uh, this is shortly before uh, Paul Ryan uh, holds a vote to see who's going to be uh, the Speaker of the House, which, by the way, uh, he was he won unanimously. Um, I guess uh, Trump gave the high sign that uh, he was not going to oppose this piece. But remember, Trump's got a nasty habit of uh, turning on uh, people that supported him. Uh, look what happened with Chris Christie. Uh, Chris gave up the ass, uh, started supporting Trump. Trump made him look like a little kid, told him to get back on a plane. Then uh, I guess uh, Chris must have done some, some kind of Maya Copa. Uh, Trump names Chris to head his transition team. Then he kicks uh, Chris to the curb, gives him a co-chairman spot, but the actual chairman uh, was Mike Pence. And now it looks like uh, anybody that was on the uh, in the Christie wing, and there were three wings. There was the Christie wing, there was the Steve Bannon wing, and then there was the um, uh, the son-in-law's wing. Now, the, um, Rance Priebus had the uh, had the backing of the son-in-law. Uh, obviously, Bannon had his own backing. And uh, Christie uh, got uh, blown up uh, by um, Donald Trump's brother-in-law to the point that he's basically out and he's not going to, I don't believe he's going to see any, uh, any significant position in the Trump administration. So now the, the remaining battle is going to be between Steve Bannon and uh, Rance Priebus as to who's uh, the number one uh, guy um, in the uh, Trump White House. But anyway, here here are the uh, Republicans, and I can't believe it. Now all of a sudden, uh, none of these women have any authority, but now that they're running all these women up there, uh, uh, like they're a significant uh, operating um, portion of the House of Representatives. They're trying to pay their mortgage every month, and they're still falling behind. Obamacare is making health care too expensive. The VA isn't listening. Government regu is regulating jobs out of uh, their lives. Our okay, you see that uh, portion underneath that says House leaders are uh, given uh, Trump hats in meeting? All the House leaders um, and all the uh, people that uh, basically were going to do the nomination, and those were the leaders, they all had to wear Trump hats in this damn meeting, okay? That reminds me of all of the uh, Nazis when uh, Hitler was uh, f formulating um, his support group. They all had to wear armbands with SWAT stickers on them. Whew, man. Our unified Republican government will take these frustrations we're hearing and work together with President-elect Trump to change the status quo. We've got bold, specific, agenda items that will make a difference in people's lives and it will address some of the biggest challenges of our time. Now I believe each plank in the Better Way agenda is very important. But this election reminded me that at the end of the day, Article 1 of our Constitution is what protects the people's voice in our government and it's our role, it's our mission to restore that voice. Okay, now this broad, she shouldn't, I don't even know where, where, why they had her up there. She's uh, out of the state of Kansas that, uh, if you didn't know or don't know it, uh, Governor Brownbeck from the state of Kansas had uh, full control. He's a Republican, and his legislature was all Republican. They decided to uh, go with the uh, all the principles of the GOP party as far as uh, tax cuts, uh, low tax rates for businesses, etc. So basically what they did is they gutted the income stream um, for uh, businesses, from businesses, okay, and expecting that businesses were going to flock to Kansas. It didn't happen. They started cutting the budget. The people started getting a little ticked off, but then when they hit the, uh, cutting the educational budget to the point that people that were on the border of Missouri were, uh, 
illegally, quote unquote, taking their kids across the border so that they could go to school in uh, Missouri. This is elementary, middle school, and high school. Uh, when it got to that point, and then Missouri got pissed off and started, uh, uh, I mean, they actually started arresting people for uh, filing uh, false uh, address uh, addresses so that their kids could go to school over there. Finally, Kansas uh, obviously saw the handwriting on the wall, but they still reelected all of the Republicans, including the governor, but they saw the handwriting on the wall and they started raising taxes again so that they would have enough money in order to fund state government. And people have sent Republicans back to Washington with a mandate for change. We have a government united together with the purpose of bringing common sense principles back to our nation's capital. Since the beginning of this year, we've traveled across the country, getting your feedback on our Better Way agenda. This set of legislative priorities is tailored to the problems facing our country that focus on empowering hardworking Americans to achieve success. Foremost among our priorities will bring be bringing balance back to our broken tax code by building a simpler, fairer, flatter code, building a code that advantages all Americans, not just the well-connected, a code that drives investment and job creation right here in America, a code that gets America growing through good old-fashioned private sector investment. It's clear that Kansans and the American people are ready for a change. With their voice as our guide, we are ready to work as a unified government to help build an opportunity economy for all Americans. Yeah, that worked out real well for Kansas, those ideas. Questions? people to judge the president elect by the decisions he's already made. What about the Bannon decision? What does this say about the Trump administration and how do you respond to these serious concerns and fears about bringing Steve Bannon into the White House? Look, I would just simply say that the president um, is going to be judged on his results. Uh, this is a Oh, wait a minute. It's not judged by his decisions. Now it's judged by his results. Okay, so he has resulted in putting a white nationalist, a racist, in a position of power next to him. That is a result of the decision that he made. The person who helped him win an incredible victory, an incredible campaign, the president's going to be judged on the results of this administration. That's why we're very eager to get up and running, to help him with his transition, to get up and running, and then to make progress on the mandate that has just been given to us by the American people. So we're confident about moving forward. We're confident about the transition, and we're very, very excited to be, about getting to work for the American people. Uh, when will you move on fiscal 17 budget resolution, and how could that affect the appropriation process in the uh, Those are decisions that are being made in the, with the transition team. None of those decisions have been made yet. We are now sitting down with, with the Trump administration in waiting, along with our colleagues, to come up with our game plan for lame duck, and also to come up with our game plan for 2017. It's very exciting. We've got a lot of work to do, and we're having constant conversations about how to do that, but we haven't made any of those specific decisions yet. Money. Uh, the president-elect has signaled that he was going to use his adult children as his advisors uh, in, this, in his uh, uh, administration. Do you have uh, any concerns about that potentially getting security clearances, number one? And two, should Trump do take any steps to ensure there are no conflicts of interest between them running look, the businesses? Look, I'll let the transition team comment about those things. We're focused on doing our job right here in Congress. I would say, look at this. You notice, he's not going to say a damn word against Trump. That was an easy one, okay? That was an absolute easy one as far as uh, his kids getting security clearances while they're going to be running their businesses. But uh, he's not. he doesn't want to comment on it. He got his balls cut off there, and he's just waiting till after they officially elect him into the uh, Speaker of the House position before he possibly says anything else. But he and Trump are going to be butting heads left and right because one thing about Trump, Trump isn't didn't swallow all the Republican bullshit just like he didn't swallow all the Democratic bullshit. And uh, th these guys have ideologies and their ideologies are not going to mesh with Donald Trump's. Donald Trump is a multi-billionaire, successful businessman who has been so successful because he's surrounded himself with good people. 
No, he's a successful billion, and he might not even be a billionaire. We don't know because we haven't seen his fucking tax returns, okay? But we do know that he's been successful by screwing people for the most part. Trump hotels, uh, uh, Trump uh, facilities that are built, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, that's spin, my friend. You know, once his properties have up and he screwed a lot, bunch of people, you know, he quote unquote has been successful, but we don't even know that because we haven't seen his tax returns. We do know that in 95, he took damn near a billion dollar loss, which was probably gonna allow him not to pay taxes for the next uh, 18 years. So that we do know. He is a man who has made great successes, created tens of thousands of jobs because he gets good advice from good people who are around him in his life. What's wrong with that? That's a good thing. We're going to focus on doing our job here in Congress. He's going to focus on populating his administration. We're going to do everything we can to help him be as successful as he's going to be, and which I think he's going to be a very successful president. We have an exciting agenda. We have a transition team that we're working with, and we're very excited about getting to work for the American people. Juan. Okay, in case you couldn't hear all of that, this guy was talking about the enmity that Steve Bannon has for him, questioning him questioning uh, uh, his going after his children, going after his choice of schools for his kids, basically calling out his manhood. And all he could do was sit up there and smile. And now he's going to say, oh, let's just let bygones be bygones. Fuck that. But I'm not looking backwards. I'm looking forward. I'm looking to the future and I'm looking forward to how make how we make this work for the American people, how we help President-elect Trump be the most successful president in our lifetimes, how we make good on the promises and get this country going again. Look, you've heard me say this so many times. 70% of the people in this nation think America is going down the wrong path. They now just said, get on a better way, get on a better path. That's our job. Our job is not to look backwards. Our job is to look forward, make President-elect Trump as successful as possible, help him with the transition so we can make good on our commitment to the American people to fix this country's big problems. You know, the only thing that gives me comfort, uh, and let me counter one of the things that he just said, 70% of the people think that America is going in the wrong direction. Okay, I, I, it is what it is, but I don't believe, obviously, it's 70%. But I can emphatically say that 75% of the eligible voters in this country did not vote for Donald Trump. That is a fact. Now, uh, number two, and... Uh, just as importantly, uh, looking forward, nah, nah, I, I, I don't, th I don't think so. Um, I think that uh, Chris Christie and, and how Trump is treating him is basically uh, just a precursor on what is going to happen to you. Remember when Chris uh, bowed out of the election and then turned around and immediately started supporting Trump and kissing his ass, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, look at where Chris is right now. Paul Ryan, you just started kissing Donald Trump's ass, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I got a funny feeling about you, my friend. Uh, you built your career on reforming settlements, a lot of conservative ideas. Donald Trump just won on a platform that in many ways is not terribly conservative. Are you prepared to lead a charge on those ideas? Look, we're, we're excited about, we're on the same page with, with, with our president-elect. I talk That's bullshit. She just said that uh, Trump uh, is... Uh, on a different page than you are, and you're trying to say he's on the same page, well, guess what? You want to uh, do entitlement uh, reform, i.e. cut cutting entitlements for Medicaid and Social Security. Donald Trump has publicly said that he wants to protect and, uh, and strengthen uh, Medicaid and Social Security. So it, at least on that point alone, you guys are on two opposite pages, and that's what the lady just said. You basically just lied to the American people by saying that you guys are on the same page. That was bullshit. Donald Trump virtually every single day. I spoke with Mike Pence this morning. We are on the same page. We're working hand in glove, and we're going to make sure that this is a very successful administration. But more importantly, we're going to make sure that the voices we heard from this election for the American people are acted upon, that we actually fix these country's problems. You take a look at, to, to get to your specific point, if you take a look at what Obamacare did to our entitlement programs, it made them worse. 
We're going to fix that. We're going to help fix these problems that are plaguing this country. Whether it Okay, he just lied again because what Obamacare did for all of the states that accepted it, at least partially if not fully, it took the pressure off of Medicare, okay? It took the state pressure off of Medicare. But obviously you don't want to acknowledge that. Skyrocketing healthcare costs, lack of jobs, regulatory red tape that's strangling jobs and businesses, fixing our national security, securing our border. These are all things that we are excited about, rolling up our sleeves and getting to work with our incoming president to make good on his promises. And those are all things that Obama wanted to do, but that you guys absolutely refused to work with him on. So now, since he's out, now all of a sudden, there's a green light, and now you can take those things up. Talk about partisan. We're going to work on all of these things in the transition. It just says, I asked her the question about budget reconciliation, budget processes. These are things that we're working on with the transition. So it's going to take time to figure out exactly what bill comes where and how it all adds up. But that's what the congressional process is all about. The point is, Donald Trump wants jobs. Donald, I've talked to Donald so many times just this week, which is let's make sure we get people back to work. Let's make sure we get this economy growing. Let's, let's take all this uncertainty out of the economy that's plaguing it and get people back to work. This is something we share. This is something we're excited about working on with, with Donald Trump. And that is why I'm very confident that we're going to have a unified government that works hand in glove with this administration to make good on the commitments and to get people back to work and fix this country's problems. Thank you very much. Yeah, see, and that's the big bullshit, okay? Obama wanted to uh, do an infrastructure program and these guys blocked them at every turn. So when they say that the uh, politics aren't partisan, just look at how the Congress treated Obama on things that are normally traditionally not partisan and that uh, will give you your answer as far as uh, how partisan politics can actually be.